guys how's it going welcome to my video all right um just want to give you guys in an update on what uh on my car um so uh, a couple days ago i uh took a trip to the airport dropping somebody off and um ended up in this uh restaurant area parked my Parked my car, went and got something to eat, probably in there for maybe 30 minutes, came back out, and uh, was all set to go back home, and I couldn't get my car to turn over. Um, it would crank, but it wouldn't start. So I must have tried cranking it up at least five, six times before I just gave up on it and, and realized that there was a, an issue that I would have to resolve first. So... Uh, first couple of times, you know, it um, it would just crank and crank and crank and crank. But but um, so basically, I was thinking uh, it it might be the battery. It might might have been a bat been been the battery. <laughs> it might have been the battery. So I was like, okay, let me turn on my headlights. Went out, checked it out. It was pretty bright. And uh, that was my test for the battery. So normally when it's that bright, and it was very bright, um, I, you know, you would, you would assume that if there was uh, an issue, you'd probably get like some kind of um, a slow crank or something like that. But considering it's cranking up, um, you know, that's the first thing that came up in my mind was maybe it's the battery, you know, uh, something that would be a, simple to fix, but. Regardless, at that point, um, I was like, okay, um, open up the hood and pretty much, you know, try to figure out, you know, if there was, if there was anything in the battery area that looked kind of off. So I um, I noticed the terminals were a bit dirty, corroded. There was some white, bluish stuff on there. So I had a can of Coke on me that I was going to drink, but instead, um, you know, uh, I was going to... I, I I took a can of Coke and I poured poured it on the terminals, and uh, it fizzed up quite a bit, as you can imagine. I took I took some um, paper towels, obviously cleaned it up, popped it back in. Now the terminals were not loose, loose. I mean they they were they were tight, but not super tight. So if if I wiggled it, I could pop it out, and then. <clears throat> So anyway, I was able to wiggle, wiggle them out, clean them, popped it back in. So there was no issues with it being loose that would that would cause the issue. So I tried to turn the car on again, and uh, still got nothing. Still got nothing. It cranked, but it wouldn't turn over. <clears throat> so at that point, I was like, okay, um, probably wasn't a battery issue, but I did have uh, a um, a power pack that I bought from Walmart uh, a couple months ago. Actually, um, I, I, I got that as a gift a couple months ago. Anyway, 75% <clears throat> um, charged up. Uh, I didn't actually charge it up to 100% because um, for whatever reason, but I, um, I popped it on and uh, tried to start it. It would crank, strong crank, no start. All right, at that point, took it off. I knew 100% it wasn't the battery that was the problem. I knew that 100% it wasn't the battery that was the problem at that point. But I, I could have guessed it without doing that. But I just wanted to make sure. All right. So uh, at that point, I was like, okay, what's next? I, I, I looked at the ground wire, checked out the ground wire. And uh, just to make sure that the ground wire was, uh, it, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't super rusted. It wasn't, there wasn't any kind of corrosion on it. So the ground wire, if you guys don't know, is the wire that um, the negative of the terminal that connects to the frame of the car. And um, I traced that, checked it out. Uh, didn't seem to be any issues with that. So I, at that point, I ruled out the battery. I ruled out the ground wire. Um, and uh, I was able to rule out the alternator, but the alternator would not have been one of the things that would have been uh, the cause of this issue to begin with 
Um, if I was getting a slow crank and then I put the battery pack on and then, you know, it jumped up and, 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 and it started up and, and then when I took the battery pack off, it, it turned itself off, turned off, died out. I would have known that was the, ba the alternator oh, that was the problem, okay? So at that point, I could rule out all those things. Now, <clears throat> and now I will say that I did have a check engine light on the dash. Um, so it, it's possible, but I've had that check engine light on the dash for quite a while. Uh, we're talking about a good um, six months that I had that I wasn't able to uh, clear it. And that check engine, that check engine light was because of an O2 sensor. Now I don't know if there's another code that popped up. Didn't know if there was, there was another code that popped up at the time, but <clears throat> but um, what I did was. I know that there's a bunch of things that be, that could cause this issue, and 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 that has a sensor on it that 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 an OBD2 reader can't pick up. Um, uh, they could be the mass airflow sensor could cause a crank no start, the throttle position sensor, the crank shaft, the cam shaft, and 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 um, probably a host of other things. And uh, if if the if the if the car's computer isn't Connected to the car itself for whatever reason, a uh, 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 blown fuse, a problem with the ECU, the car's computer. But okay, so I have, I had a uh, nineteen dollar nineteen dollar OBD two uh, reader that I bought from Walmart. So just to test all that out, because um, it would, you know, because you would want in this situation, that situation, to eliminate as many things as possible. So I popped it in, and it scanned all the way through. At that point, when it scanned all the way through, I knew 100% that it probably wasn't the car's computer. Because if it was the car's computer or ECU having an issue, it would probably have scanned halfway and then stopped. That's not what it did. All right? And then, and then it would just hang there. It didn't, it didn't, do, it didn't do that. It, it went all the way through. So at that point, I knew it, was, it wasn't the car's computer. And then the readout was another thing that tipped me off that it wasn't anything to do with um, you know um, the, the camshaft the crankshaft any of those things that have a sensor associated with because the only code that popped up was an OBD2 um, code that was the only code that popped up alright so at that point I could rule all those things out um, all those things were ruled out at that point um so, I was left with um, a couple of things that could cause it where um, I would be able to resolve it fairly quickly without having to put in any kind of effort as far as changing up, um, you know, major uh, mechanical parts. Like, you know, so I was like, <clears throat> okay. No, you know, I knew the starter was working. Obviously, it wasn't just the starter because the starter was working. It was cranking. It was cranking strong. So that starter could be ruled out, ruled out um, all those things. And um, I was hoping that um, it wasn't the fuel pump, <clears throat> especially the fuel pump. I mean, it could have been the fuel pump or the um, or the fuel filter. Now, generally speaking, the test for that is. You know, um, you would want to you would want to hear the fuel pump whizzing, uh, the motor whizzing. So the test for that is normally you would have somebody have their ear to the gas to the gas tank. All right, not to the gas tank, but to the gas cap area with the gas cap off. You know, and then have somebody you know try to turn the car to the on position. The on the position is the position before the car turns over you don't want to crank it because once you crank it turn to the crank position it you know the, the whole the sounds kind of the cranking and 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 if there is a sound there was a sound coming from the the fuel pump you would you would you know it would drown that out so basically i didn't have some i didn't have anybody else with me at the time so i was sitting in the car with everything off all right blow motor was off everything was off and I turned it to the on position and was sitting in the car trying to listen for some kind of whizzing sound, for some kind of sound that might 
you know that that I might be have been able to to um to make out, but unfortunately I wasn't able to make out any sounds um, at all. You know whether it was whizzing or not, I wasn't able to distinct to to make a distinction. <clears throat> so just to be sure, um, I uh, the next step I did was um, I actually got to the few. The um the fuse the fuse box with the relays and, and everything, and I checked out all the fuses. I checked out all the fuses, and um, none of the fuses uh, looked like um, they were blown at all. It it, it it they didn't look like they were blown. There wasn't any kind of brownish tint to the top of the fuses. It, 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 they didn't smell like they were burned. So I, I was able to no not in a hundred percent, but I was able to discern that it wasn't the fuses. Um, now it would have been a you know I would have it would have been great if I had a few tests fuse tested with me, but I didn't. So um, the next thing that uh, that I looked at was the um, the the relays, sp- specifically the fuel pump relay. So I looked at the fuel pump relay and uh, couldn't make out whether it was blown or not. But but there was another relay that was the that, that was the same or, or similar. So what I did was <clears throat> I swapped it out. All right, I swapped it out and um, got back in my car, tried to turn it on. Was hoping that that would have fixed it and. Guess what, guys? It fixed it. It cranks, cranked up, no problems whatsoever. And uh, at that point, I realized that it was the fuel pump relay that was the problem. So, uh, long story short, I was able to drive it to an auto zone, um, got the relay for it, and then popped it in. Uh, you know, popped out the, the bad relay for the good one. Uh, and... Um, at least one of them, and uh, everything has been working fine since. Uh, no, no issues whatsoever. I am, I was, uh, I am so glad that it wasn't a fuel pump because that would have been um, a major. Uh, that would have been, you know, more work, more money. So, um, if you guys are in this situation, you guys are going through this crank no start situation. Just, you know, just go through, go down the list of what I went through. Okay, um, you guys should be able to figure out um, what that problem is. Now, there's the other or the other things that you could look at as far as what what, what could be causing it. Uh, ignition, a bad ignition cylinder could be causing uh, something like that. Um, a uh, a bad fob key could be causing something like that. Um, if you guys are in that situation and uh, you guys went through everything and everything seems to be working, um, those are the two things that I did not test. Because um, I did change the, the you know, I, I did change the key on the fob um, a couple months ago. So I didn't think that was the issue. The, the ignition cylinder would have been something that would, would um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know about that. It would, probably would have been something that occurred uh, multiple times, sporadically or something like that. That could be the issue. But it wasn't the issue here. Um, I, I hope you guys... Uh, figure out your problem because you guys are watching this video. Obviously, you guys are probably in the same what are in what is you probably guys are probably in the same situation. So, anyway, guys, any comments? Please leave a comment in the comment section. Please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. All right, guys, take care.